Hi YouTube. Hey, I just want to take a quick minute to introduce this video and uh, in this video we're doing a, a custom range hood build and uh, I've, I've taken more time to get into details for the DIYers that uh, aren't quite sure how to approach it and I uh, just want to give you as much information as I could that uh, uh, you'll be able to go ahead and do this, do, uh, do a range hood yourself, hopefully. Uh, and again, this, this is custom. It's, it's one range hood. Uh, there's a lot of variables, uh, but this will kind of give you a, a, an idea of how things go together or how they can go together. Uh, it's just like any woodworking project. There's a thousand ways to accomplish the same thing, uh, and this, this is one of them. Uh, so, uh, like I said, it's a longer video because I've gone into more detail, uh, but at the tail end of the video, I've also done a section of, of the on-site measure. Uh, so you can see when you go to the job site the kind of things that you're looking at, where I'm pulling measurements from, and uh, what I'm thinking about as I'm uh, deciding how I'm going to approach this, uh, this range hood. So I, I hope it's a good video. I hope it's helpful. Uh, I'm going to put some links uh, down below, and uh, enjoy. Thanks, guys. Hi YouTube. Okay, here we are back up in the shop and I've got an order for another range hood and I'm hoping that uh, I can show you how I'm going about building this range hood. It's a really simple, straightforward one and um, I'm, I'm trying to do a better job of videotaping this so I can uh, show you guys, you DIYers. Uh, so if you need, need to build your own range hood, you can. Uh, it can be rather intimidating just trying to come up with an idea of, of how to design it, how to build it but it's a lot more straightforward than you might think. They're, they're pr actually pretty basic. Uh, the one I'm doing now, uh, I was told about it uh, a good month ago, probably five weeks ago, and uh, it's needed, I think I'm supposed to deliver it Monday, and I'm still waiting for the designer to give me final, final whatever. Uh, I've got a, a big picture, so I can go ahead and build the box, I can get the blower unit fit in it, but the finished details are still a little on the sketchy side, so we'll kind of go from there. Uh, I'm going to include a, a little video of the on-site measurements, so when I went to the job to measure what they have, they installed the cabinets. Ideally, I would like to supply the, the hood before the cabinets go installed, yeah, get installed, so it all goes together as one unit. But that very seldom happens. I usually have to come back after the cabinets are installed and take my measurements and then they've got to fit it in between the existing cabinets. Uh, so fortunately this is a paint grade so I'm going to give them just a little bit of like a, maybe a sixteenth or so of playroom and they can just put a bead of caulk down the side of it and it'll paint up and it'll be fine. Uh, but uh, one of the nice things about being a small shop um, if, if you're not a DIY, DIYer, if you're trying to set up a small shop and make money the one thing that, that you can do that the online guys can't is uh, the the detail the the custom stuff and the the short notice the the customer service uh, you can provide service that an online company can't uh, for a lot of reasons one is you're you're local you're there you can go to the job site you can meet the designer uh, you can get it there like for example even if I don't hear from the designer until uh, Sunday afternoon or Monday morning I can do the final details and deliver it Monday afternoon. An online company can't do that. They've got to have two or three weeks notice, a week just for shipping, if nothing else. And uh, so they can't do the last minute stuff that a small shop, a small custom shop can. So that's a lot of your, your niche in a small shop where you can make money that an online company can't. You can build the exact same product. You can even charge a little bit more and still do all right because you can offer that service that an online company can't. So that said, um, here we are Thursday, late Thursday, and I'm just getting started on this, this, uh, this range hood, and uh, it's going to kind of slow me down a little bit talking to you guys, but that's fine too, I don't mind, and uh, try and try and give you enough information that a DIYer can uh, more or less figure out what's going on. And I'm sorry, I won't give you a lot of detail just because I need to keep moving, but I'm going to do the best I can. So I'm going to pull you off the, the, the pod for a sec and we'll kind of look at what I've got going on here. So the, the first, the most important thing you need to, to do is, uh, well, let me, to start with, you need your blower unit. Uh, the last several I've done, I've built off um, uh, uh, specs, the spec sheet that comes with the unit. And the last half dozen or so, the spec sheets have been wrong, and they've had to do modifications on site to get the blower unit in. 
And I hate that. I really don't like my customer having to, to mess with things on site. And especially the guys that, that go ahead and do it themselves, which is fine. I mean, I'm glad they do it. But I want to be I want to be providing the service, so I'd rather they called me and I go and take care of it for them. But uh, some of the guys just go ahead and do it themselves, and uh, so I hate that for them because then they've got that headache of modding, modifying this cabinet on site. So the the first thing you want to do is get your blower unit, and then you're pulling dimensions off the blower unit, not off a piece of paper. And then you've got to translate that into what you want to do. So. If you look at the, the on-site measurement, when you watch that video or that part of the video, um, we're building basically a tall rectangle cabinet. And uh, there's really not a lot of detail to it. Uh, and like I said, the, the designer hasn't finished, so I'm hoping to do that um, uh, tomorrow or, or uh, uh, Monday morning maybe. Uh, but the basic thing, the basic box I can go ahead and build because I'm tied into the, the cabinets that are existing and my blower unit. So those are, are preset. There's nothing I can do about those. So if we look down here, these are measurements I took off the actual blower unit. So it's 28 and a half wide. It's 17 and 13 sixteenths deep. And my overall cabinet height, like you'll see in the video, is 60. And they want the bottom of the, the cabinet that I'm building to be 13 and a half inches up from the 60. So that's going to give me, uh, was that the 46 and a half? So my dimensions are going to be 46 and a half by 30. So my 30 wide, I still need to know, uh, hang on, but, but I still need to know my depth too. So the, these are pretty much preset because of what's already existing. But my depth is based on that. I've got to get that in. And the other issue I have is that the uh, the project manager told me the the backsplash is going to be cabinet material which means i'm going to be inch and a quarter inch and three eighths so my blower unit has to come off the back wall probably an inch and a half so then obviously everything needs to get built out into the room to accommodate all that stuff plus the blower plus all my my building material so the next thing is to to do a plan which because I've done these a lot, um, I do a full size. Th this one's just a straight box, so all I need is the actual dimensions. So I've, I've got a storyboard here. Uh, I've got another one. I'm not sure where the storyboard is, but I'm hoping to build a video of that. And that one's got tapered box parts, and so that the storyboard's a lot more detailed. Uh, but with this one we're doing now, it's just a simple, straightforward storyboard. So let's see. We're trying. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, but uh, let's see. Overall, I started with my, where are you? Okay, I start with my 30 inch for my overall cabinet space. And then I've got my half inch material and um, I can end up with a quarter inch place. So basically what I need to start with is my outside 30 inch and my half inch material. And I do that on both sides. And then I come in, I find my center of the overall cabinet then from the center, I measure half of the blower unit, which puts me up to here. And this one right here. So I've got um, about a quarter inch of playroom on either side of them. My blower unit is about a half inch smaller than the opening of my box. And this one, hopefully we'll see it later, it just slides in and then screws through the sides. Some of them have a little flange that goes around and you need to screw in the flange. Uh, so you need to build enough material for that. But this one doesn't. This one just slides in and then screws through the side of the, the cabinet. So, <clears throat> so I'll build it. Um, there'll be a little bit of slop in here, and then I'll just build that in. I'll, I'll use filler and bring that in so it's tight. And then on the, the depth of the cabinet, okay, so I'm starting at my wall. And then I have to add, excuse me, I have to add an inch and a half because I've got all that backsplash countertop depth here. So I'm adding an inch and a half so I can clear the backsplash. Then I've got to add the width of my blower unit, which was 17 and 13. So I go all the way to 17 and 7 eighths, just so I got a little bit of playroom. And then I'm adding a quarter inch, again, just for a little bit of playroom. And then I've got my half inch material. So I end up at about 20 and an eighth, which I might stretch out, stretch out to 20 and a quarter 
just because I got playroom and I'll just do some build in. I can always add an eighth of an inch or something back here and push the blower unit forward. So I hope that makes sense. But that's, that's how I get my dimensions. So then the next thing is going to be laying out on my sheet goods, uh, the dimensions that I need. Um, figuring out whether I can get them all out of one sheet, if I need to, and being paint grade, the grain direction is irrelevant. And this material I get from uh, Lowe's, it's a paint grade plywood. <clears throat> it's actually a pretty good material. It's a little on the rough side, but if you sand it, it it's fine. So the, the direction is irrelevant. It doesn't matter being paint grade and, and the, the grain will just disappear once you sand it and prime it. So the, the next trick is to get all my parts laid out and see how much uh, sheet goods I need to get it done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come back. Okay, so it's gonna be an easy layout uh, because it's 46 and a half high. Then I can get my, all my parts across the sheet. So I have no problem. I got 30 and then two, uh, another 20 and a half. So four, 40 and a half. Uh, so 30, uh, four, five, six, seven. So I only need 70 some inches. So I have no problem laying it out on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, get myself a clean straight edge on the bottom. So I'm gonna set up my track saw and do a, a rip on the bottom. But while I'm doing that, I wanted to show you guys if you're doing a track saw and you need to join um, tracks, this uh, uh, joiner that has the bottom plate, it's the two-piece joiner, this is highly recommended. If Without this, you end up putting dimples in the top of your track, and it, it's really kind of annoying because uh, you also put them in the bottom of the track over here too. So I highly recommend that two-piece joiner. You're also going to want a nice long straight edge and uh, I've joined up to 14 uh, I'm sorry up to four tracks together and I used a uh, 16 foot flooring square you know the, the uh, rectangular aluminum tubes uh, tube real aluminum tubes whatever anyway the, the aluminum straight edge they use for flooring uh, I used those and it worked out very well I had uh, uh, no problems on that 16 foot uh, cut I was able to do a, a nice clean joint on those. I did uh, 45 corners on 16 foot faux beam and uh, using that flooring straight edge to set them up, uh, it all worked out just fine. Now this cut, it doesn't matter if you're square or straight or where, well, straight, yeah, that straight matters. But it doesn't matter if you're square with anything. And we're just gonna bring it in uh, a sixteenth to an eighth, just enough to shave off that edge. This is your square edge. This is what you're creating right now. And I usually use clamps whenever possible. Uh, these are, are win. They're, last I checked, I think they were $16 a pair. And in my mind, why not? Save uh, bumping it and screwing things up. So I got the clamp on it, I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so clamped, it's good and solid. Don't have to worry about bumping it or going out of square or anything like that. If you check out the videos, I've done a review on the, the Craig track saw. It's actually a, a really good saw. I'm really happy with it. So now we've got a nice long straight edge. So everything will come off of that edge now. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut you down and I'll lay up for my cross cuts. I apologize YouTube, I, I did lie. I was forgetting this is a straight cabinet, so my overall height stays the same on all sides. If you're cutting a tapered cabinet, uh, then your side dimensions will change depending on your tapers. Uh, if your front taper is different than your side taper, then you can't cut everything the same height, it's gonna change. So on those, I usually leave the top until after I get everything assembled, and then I cut off the top. Uh, but on this one, all the sides are square, so all the height is, is the same. So I can go ahead and cut my 46 and a half uh, panel and then that's all done. It's all nice straight. 
Nice straight clean cuts. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and set up the cross cuts and I'll come back and talk to you about that. Because I'm building a folding box, and you'll see what I mean as we progress, all my vertical cuts, so with the box standing up, all my vertical cuts need to be uh, 45. So they're 90 degree angles, so each cut needs to be 45. So the, the, the Craig saw, it takes a little bit of fooling around to get it set up originally, but once you get it set up, uh, it's very good at maintaining the angles, so I can go ahead and just flip it over to the 90 degree and I'll be fine. This chip guard in front of the blade, if you're cutting a 45, you need to raise that up. And then remember when you're doing straight cuts to drop it back down. This one I'm establishing my square. So remember we did a clean cut down here. So this one is going to be a square cut off of this, so I need to make sure that's 90 degrees. And... Um, I was thinking something else I was going to tell you, and I forget what. Uh, and again, I'm using my clamps. So I got my clamps set so I don't have to, things aren't going to move around on me. I can um, bang stuff and move stuff and not worry about my angle. And I do want to check my 90 degree just to make sure. And yeah, it's, it's bang on. Uh, okay, so right. So I'm establishing 90 degrees to this when I do this cut. Uh, so I'm, I'm creeping in and then this is going to establish my 30 inch width. So I just, I go ahead and cut this 90 degree to this and then I measure my 30, 30 inches over to get my outside cut. So now, like I said, this is actually really good reinforcement for corners. So I always, I always keep those uh, 90 degree fall offs. Using your track saw, your fall off, uh, the, put the track on the piece you're keeping. So the fall off is always away from the track. And again, I like to plant. And this is personal. You don't have to clamp if you don't want to. But uh, I'd rather take an extra two seconds and know I'm good. And I confirm the square. Beauty. And I've just uh, fallen into doing this. I had a square mounted to the, to the track, but I never felt comfortable that it was uh, flat against my surface. I never got the feel for knowing I was secure with that. So with this, everything's visual and feel. So I know I'm tight against the fence, uh, against the track, and I can feel that edge. So I, I feel much more secure with this because I can see everything and feel everything. So it turned out after I cut the, the center piece out, I uh, made the second cut, turned out there's quite a bow in the sheet. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Um, so I've gone ahead and flipped the sheet over because it, it cuts a lot easier if the bow is in the center instead of on the sides. Um, I was having trouble with, with binding and that's because the sides were coming up and I couldn't get, uh, couldn't get pressure on those to pull them down. And uh, so if I put the, the bow in the center, put the, the high spot of the bow in the center, then um, I can clamp the edges and my, my uh, track will just ride over that bow and it won't affect anything at all. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up. I'm going to recut that edge and uh, get it cleaned up because it got a little, little chewed up with the saw binding. So I'll recut that edge. And then on the sides, so the center part I need to do 45s on both sides, but on the sides I only need 45 on, on one edge, on the front edge. The back edge is going to be square. So I'm going to clean this edge up and then I'll, I'll recut this 45 so I can do the first side. Okay, so here we are with our panels cut. We've got uh, 45 degree angles on this side, on both sides of this, and on the, this. And one thing I forgot to do, so keep in mind when you're cutting your panels, 
your side panels or end panels, make sure you cut it right and left. Because uh, we, we did a, a square side on the bottom uh, when we started. Uh, so, you know, that's your starting point down there. And I failed to keep track of my, right, my, uh, my bottom. And uh, so I ended up cutting both sides the same. But I've, I've got lucky and my, my corners are still square. So I'm still okay. Um, and so I've got my 20 and a quarter inch side panels and my 30 inch center panel. And I'm going to go ahead and, and put them together. And we're building a box. Let me kind of scoot you over so I'm not turning my back on you. Uh, I think you can see from there. Okay, so we're building a box. And it was also important that, that because the, my sheets are bowed, if you can see it, it was important that the bows are all going the same direction. So when I pull my boxes together, the bows are all the same. But when I fold them, they're going to straighten each other out. So we're going to create a hinge, and I'm going to fold them. Uh, we'll hinge it, flip it over, glue it, and then fold them. And when we fold them, these two corners will straighten each other out. The hinge will bind the corner together, and uh, it'll flatten everything out, and it'll be, it'll be perfect. So we bring our corners together, our sharp 90 degree corners, and I just realized feeling it that I didn't set my saw deep enough, so I've got just a little square edge on that. So this side's fine, but this side, because of the bow, I didn't set myself deep enough. So I'm going to pause you now, and all I'm going to do is run a utility knife across this bottom and just cut that little lip off so my, uh, my bevels will be able to line up tight. Okay, so we're back. So all I did, this little ledge, I didn't set my saw quite deep enough, so I had a little bit of square edge here. So I literally just ran the, literally, just ran the utility knife along here, and all it is is a matter of cleaning that up so that corner doesn't interfere with this bevel uh, closing up nice and tight. Okay, so that's done. And there's bottom, okay. So again, don't forget to, to keep track of your bottom and label it. And I've got a new bottom over here. Okay, and then we're going to bring these bevels together. And a little bit of gap is okay. Being these sheets are so beveled, you're going to have a little bit of gap in here. But when it closes down tight, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll draw itself together as you do the hinge. Okay, and bevels nice and snug together. Flush up your bottom edge. Okay, so now we're using fiberglass packing tape or fiberglass reinforced packing tape. And this is, I forget, two or two and a half or something. So this is going to be our hinge. And double check our bottoms are flush. And then we're going to tape those corners together and push the panels down tight, try and get the bow out as you stick the bush, as you stick the tape. Okay, get it nice and snug. And again, double check, we're good. Flatten everything out as you stick the tape. And they'll end up a little uneven, um, but it's fine. You got your hinge established. See my height's off just a hair, but it doesn't matter. And this stuff is sticky, so make sure you keep it flat so it doesn't stick to itself.
Okay, there's your hinge. The next biggest trick is to get these flipped over. <coughs> and it's a trick working by yourself. If you have another pair of hands, it's a piece of cake. And it's just a matter of figuring out how to do it. And then you want some uh, 90 degree clamps because you want to make sure your, your panels end up about 90 degrees. And then that does take some fooling around. You kind of got to work with it as you go. Uh, I've got some other clamps over there. Once I get it folded up, then I'll just uh, kind of keep working it a little bit until I get to where I'm happy with its squareness. Okay. And the one nice thing about the, the paint grade is you can shoot it. So I use uh, pin nails or the 20, 21 gauge or something pin nails and I can go ahead and pin that and they'll never show. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and grab those and I'll grab my glue and I'll be right back. Okay so I apologize they're 23 gauge pins and I hope you're going to be able to see. So if this was a um, if this was a stain grade cabinet I'd be using hide glue and uh, the reason I use hide glue is that with a little bit of sanding and a little bit of water this this is uh, a water soluble even when it's dry so with a little bit of water and a little bit of sanding you can blend this so that it's not visible through the stain but with the regular tight bond stuff uh, it's very very hard to fix glue on the surface with that to, to stain so it doesn't show through the stain but again, like I said, this is paint grade, so it doesn't matter. Um, this really, th this is the way you want to go if you can. <clears throat> and you can just slough it in there. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be pretty. Because again, it's, it's uh, paint grade, so we'll have easy cleanup. Okay. this down a little bit, come over the edge. Uh, and this is going to fold up and when you fold that it actually straightens that panel out. And we want that 90 degrees, it's got to go right down here in the bottom corner. Not too snug, just enough to hold it for now. And then we work these two edges together, or tighten these two up together so that it draws it into the. If you do it too tight, it won't draw into the corner and square up the panel. So draw them, tighten them both down together so they can draw into the corner. Now this panel is still going to have its bow out here, but that front edge will be straight. So we still need to address this down the road at some point. One square is up in the van, but this one will do, so check your square. Not even close. Because uh, i got a bow here. That one's close. <clears throat> so yeah, the, the bow in the center of this is throwing this panel off a little bit. Um, yep, it just sucks it right in. But you've got a bit of playroom with that. Uh, I need to go check on a schedule. I just got a call from a plumber. Give me a sec. Okay, so I got the plumber rescheduled. Uh, so now I'm just going to fool around with this and try and get things all settled in.
So I'm gonna give that a little time to set up. Uh, I'll double check my square and then your your uh, fall off from cutting your your bevels. Uh, once this sets up a little bit I'm gonna take this around to the inside and reinforce that corner inside. Okay and here we are with the, the glue dried and you can see I put the the fall off or the cut off from cutting the uh, the bevels in here to reinforce these corners. Now normally I would basically just put probably three braces across here uh, but the problem I have if you can see it is this plywood has quite a warp to it it's a wee bit of a mess so I think what I have to do is do a full bat and I, I hate doing that it's just a waste of material but um, being that plywood so far out of whack I don't know that I have a whole lot of choice so in doing this I can't rely on on my measurements here so I'm pulling measurement down here where everything is secured and anchor and essentially permanent and then I'll bring that up here so I'm going to use this measurement here to uh, cut my panel that's going to go in the back so I'll go ahead and do that and then and this is all square cuts so this is easy you just run through this through the table saw ain't no thing uh, so I'll go ahead and do that and then come back to you okay so here's that back panel drilled bring it up so you can see it and uh, if you watch that video you see I've got the, the uh, double holes and if you watch that video about the micro pocket holes in the screws that we have to use are three quarters of an inch so they're really very short so you've got very minimal mechanical uh, holding power and they're also a fine thread too I want to show you the back panel drilled and you'll notice if you can see that I've drilled uh, double holes and the reason for that if you watch the video I did about the micro pocket hole jig you'll see that uh, in this half inch material we're only using three quarter inch screws and they're also a fine thread so you don't have much mechanical strength so I'm, I'm doubling up these holes just to, to give it that much more mechanical strength when uh, when I screw everything together and also with with these micro pocket holes I would definitely glue it the the screws just aren't strong enough to uh, to hold mechanically so you want to make sure you've got uh, uh, the glue strength as well so we've got our back up back uh, we've got our cabinet up on side and there's plenty of strength in here with the reinforcing even though it's just half inch material it's still plenty strong um, and I think a lot of that's because of this uh, corner that we added and the other thing I didn't point out to you yesterday is the reinforcing corner I added. I left it up quite a ways. I didn't run it down to the end because I'm not sure where my hood, my blower unit's going yet. So I can always come back and re reinforce that corner later on if I need to. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to put our back panel in. And we'll just get it up here. And I'll set it back inside. And then I'm going to glue and screw one side at a time because it's going to be a bit of a fight. So um, I'm not going to uh, show you all this just because it takes too much time and it's not worth it. So I'm just going to glue a bead down here, uh, get this side screwed in, then I'll lift this panel, uh, lift this a little bit and bring my panel up and put a bead of glue on top of the back panel. And then I'll drop it down and, and screw everything together. And just a, a quick tip, again, this, this is not flat either. That's got a bow to it. So we'll start at one end, and then I can work that end in a route to get this lined up, and I just work my way across, moving this end in and out to line up my back panel. Okay, so there you are, glued and screwed. It's all nice and tight together. Um, i just give it a little quick check for square. Uh, that's bang on. Uh, it's... There's, there's going to be enough movement in it, even after it's uh, dried up, uh, that it can adjust. And your, where am I? Uh, we can put angles in here if we need to square it up later on, reinforce it and square it. And then down here at the bottom, the the, the blower unit's going in here, and uh, there's going to be 
something built up around it, depending on the size of the unit, once I get in and fit it. And uh, so we can also square up the unit down here too. You can see there's a bit of a bow here. So there obviously needs to be something to straighten that panel out. Um, but that's, that's really not that big a deal. We just figure that out as we get the blower unit in. I can set a, a panel up a little higher too and just cut the center out of it for the duct to blow through. Uh, so that's it for now. So I'm going to go get some breakfast. Okay, so now we've got our box roughly built. Um, and the, the whole reason for the box is the, the blower unit. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, get the blower unit out and see about getting it fit in and how we're going to make our adjustments. Because once I get the blower unit in, and I know it's going to fit, then I can work everything else around that. customer's key things, I think I might have talked about that earlier, is he's got uh, countertop material for the backsplash. I don't remember what it was, quartz or, or something like that. So he's probably going to have an inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths of backsplash material. So the blower unit needs to be up towards the, the front, away from the backsplash, uh, probably about an inch and a half. So I'll double check and make sure my measurement's going to allow for that. And then I'll probably go ahead and do that before I even start, because I have to have that. So um, I'll do that first, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so the dimensions of your rain hood, range hood, the, the blower unit that fits up inside, uh, will vary. To make mine fit, uh, I've added a piece of three-quarter and half inch on the bottom, and then I've added a piece of quarter inch. Um, it's masonite. There's a scrap. This is actually pre-cut to the uh, three and I think it's three and three quarters by quarter inch. It's masonite, and it's made for doing uh, radius forms. So this is usually in the masonry aisle, um, but it, they're they're pre-cut, ready to go. Makes it really quick and easy, and they're a uh, little bit thicker than quarter inch plywood. I think these are actually quarter inch. Uh, so I got a piece of that up here, and I think I'm going to end up with a piece of it on either side, but that remains to be seen. Uh, the other issue I had is, is my box doesn't want to quite stay square and I can put some blocking up in the other end which I'll do when I get to it but I also went ahead and made this as a so th this gets me my square and then the relief inside is for all the, the ducting and electrical and stuff like that so that's just gonna drop inside the box and Okay, so I had the off cut from doing the 45s, from doing the bevels. So I put that off cut inside to reinforce these corners. And then uh, I left them short because I didn't know where my, where my blower unit was going to end up. So I'm going to, this insert, to help keep the thing square, it's actually just going to butt up against those corners. And then I'll put some blocks down on the bottom to uh, secure the bottom side of it. And all that, all that's doing is keeping the box square. It, it really doesn't do much of anything else. It helps to flatten out these panels, uh, being it's, it's a half inch plywood and it's a little flimsy. Uh, it helps to flatten those out, it'll flatten this out, and it'll square my box. Okay, I'm going to scoot you up a little closer. Now again, this is custom for the uh, blower unit that I had, but uh, I added build up down the bottom. I got a three quarter and a half, and again a half inch back panel, and then the quarter inch masonite on the side. Hope you can see okay. And then there's the the panel up inside to uh, square everything up. And you want a hair of playroom. You probably want a sixteenth or so of playroom around it. Okay, so there you go. Fits in just right. Are you seeing that? Yep. Okay. Uh, that wrong way. And then they've got some adjustment. They can raise and lower it however much they want, uh, within reason. <laughs> okay. So that ends in good shape. And then this, I'll either trim this out with a real thin uh, veneer that I'll rip out of the table saw. This edge. Um, or I'll sand it and fill it 
just use wood filler and then sand it again so it cleans it up. So next thing I need to do is uh, clean up my corners and then trim out the front. And again, the sides get no trim because I'm going box to box. Uh, the sides are going to be tight. Okay, so just a real quick update. Uh, I finally got a, a final decision from the designer. And basically she wants a, a shaker style, a shaker panel style. And uh, uh, we thought we didn't want to actually have a door look. We thought we wanted an actual panel, or I say she. I say we, I mean she. So, and because she left me so short on time, I don't really have time to build panels. So I'm faking it, being as paint grade, I can get away with it. And uh, I'm building my frame out of three quarter. And there's just a little chamfer down here on the bottom, about a 15 degree chamfer down here on the bottom. And I'm going to cut half inch panels. So three quarter frame, I'm going to cut half inch panels and lay them in. And that will leave a quarter inch reveal here. That will leave basically the, the chamfer as a reveal. And uh, so it, in theory it should look like uh, shaker panels. Uh, but we'll, we'll find out when it's all done. So I've, I've gone ahead and, and matted the, the uh, styles and rails. And uh, I'm just about to cut these panels and get them ready. Uh, I've got filler on the outside. It all needs to be sanded. Uh, so we'll wait for that. Because of the 15 degree chamfer, I ended up with a, a space in here because I wasn't going to take the time to, to make these fit. Especially being paint grade. It's never going to show, never going to make any difference whatsoever. I've got the little void here from the 15 degrees, but uh, filler and, and paint, it'll be fine. You'll never see it. Uh, let's see. I guess that's it for now. And uh, again, because we're going tight to cabinets, uh, full overlay door cabinets, so there's no face frame here. I couldn't do any return trim. So we're just doing square edges, and uh, that's it for now. Um, I'll cut those panels and get back to you. Okay, so I've got those panels cut. I've got I just added the three quarter styles and rails on <coughs> on top of the box, and then I've cut these half inch panels to inlay. Yeah, there you go. Beauty. Okay. So once you get in, it's going to look like it's all cocked and ready to paint. It's just going to look like a regular panel. Yep, it'll be fine and dandy. So there's a quick way to make a, a shaker looking panel if you need to. Just add your, your three quarter styles and rails and insert a half inch panel. And uh, it'll get you there. Okay YouTube, here we are with the, the final results. And I usually don't get to see these on site. I don't get to see them uh, installed and painted uh, every once in a while. And if I do, then I'll, I'll do another video that shows it. But this is usually the, the last view I get of these uh, um, uh, hood cabinets, or uh, range hood cabinets. So I got the, the panels installed, and they actually look really good. It looks like a door. Uh, the painter's going to have to run a bead of caulk around it, cleaned up. Now in retrospect, I wished I had... Uh, run these full length and then put the uh, the rails in between run the styles top to bottom and put the the rails in between um, I just wouldn't even think about it. I was looking at this line, this line at the bottom wanting it to be nice and clean and uh, just honestly hadn't thought about it but uh, if, if this line blends with the paint it won't make any difference if the line does show then it'll be a little different than the cabinet doors but um, uh, I, I honestly don't think it's going to show once it's installed. And again, the cabinets are coming tight to the, the side of the, the range hood. And uh, there's no overlay. They're, they're full overlay doors, so there's no face frame. So I can't trim up the bottom at all. I've got no way to return trim back to the cabinets. So it's just a, a just square. That's all we can do with it. But it, it turned out fine. It, it looked really good. Uh, I did drop the top rail to line up with the doors. They're, they're a quarter inch down for the top of the face frame. Uh, so this, this line should be the same all across the top of the cabinets. And then the, uh, the project manager is going to take care of trimming this out. Um, there's already crown mold. It's already a two-stage crown mold with a one-by and then a crown mold on top. And this will go between the cabinets and then slide up to the one-by. And then they'll add a one-by on here and they can cope the crown back into the existing crown. So um, there shouldn't be anything to installing it. Uh, just... Butt it up to what's there and then add 
additional crown and they'll be good to go. So that is it. And again, this was custom made to fit the range hood. Uh, so a priority is to get your range hood first to make sure it's going to fit in your cabinet. Uh, so I hope this has been good. I hope it's been a good video. Uh, please like and subscribe and make sure to check out the channel for uh, other things we got going on. Thanks guys. Have a great day. And I'll also uh, in include some uh, links down below uh, for different tools and, and things that I use. So if, if anything looks interesting, then uh, check the, uh, the links down below. So here we are at the Kinsey Job Apple something. And that's where the range hood is going. And let's see, it's... Because of the full overlay doors, I have to allow a little bit, so we have to put a filler on the side. And, and my opening measures. There, 30 and a quarter. And if I come up higher, sorry, it's hard to see. If I come up higher, where is it? Uh, oh, okay, there we go. It's a little bigger. Looks like 30 and 3 eighths probably. So it's getting bigger, so that's fine. Uh, and it'll just bump against that up the top. My overall height of the cabinet is 60, so then we just have to deduct how much they want it raised up they, um, from the bottom of the cabinet. They usually come up 12, this one's marked at 14, so I'll have to double check and make sure they're coming up to 14. So it'll be 60 minus 14. And then I just need to double check on the, she just wants a simple frame, I'm guessing the same style as the doors. So I need to say if she wants two panels with the upper the same height as the door and the bottom just whatever the balance is. So it makes a three inch frame and there's a taper. Uh, where is it? There it is. <laughs> I don't know what the angle is. Probably about 15 degrees, I would guess. I'll play with that. Close will be fine, you won't be able to see it. And it's a paint grade. So if she wants the panel at the same height, then that's easy enough to do. Okay, so 17 and a half, I go all the way up. 17 three quarters, yeah, so the gap at the top's about a quarter inch. So that's fine, I can pull it down a quarter.